Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. It's the end of March. It's time to look at how I got on with the pens that I've been using this month. This month's theme, they're all pens from Taiwan. So join me now down on the mat and let's dig in and take a look at the results of this month's testing. So here we are down on the mat. We started the month. We had the Twisby Eco, the Twisby Diamond 580, the Opus 88 Coloro, the Twisby VAT 700R in the Iris, a Laban 325 and a Twisby Draco. Let's just position this back to the top. So which pen comes in at position number six? It has to be the Twisby Eco. Now, I love this pen. I love the color of it. I love the feel of it. I've got a number of Ecos and each month in the pens in use, you do see another one of my Ecos. Here we go. This is with an orange color rather than the green. This has got a 1.1 stub in. That's why I use it for writing my titles, as you can see here, and also my scores. But we were using the green one this month. This comes with a fine nib. It's quite an okay nib. I mean, it's nice but it's very scratchy when it's writing. And yes, I know it's a fine nib, so expect it to be scratchy, but this seems really bad. It's as if it's catching on the paper all the time. It's a piston filling pen. I love that about it. It takes an awful lot of ink. That's one of the things this month, because most of my pens were piston fillers, and there's only one really that ran out of ink. Downside with this mechanism, it takes up roughly half of that body, so you do lose a lot of potential ink capacity. But as I say, you know, I've been using this multiple times a week for the whole week, and there's still a little bit of ink left in there. Let's go and take a look in the Tomai River paper. This is 52 GSM Tomai River paper. You can see here the flow's really nice. It keeps up no matter what I'm doing. It's got a nice color to it. I really do like this color of this Irishizuku Shinryaku. It's a nice green, but it's not too in your face. Down near the bottom, you can see I've done a couple of little swipes. So I've got a hash mark, then a hash with a swipe through it, a little scribble, then a, the ink's fairly, the ink, it's about in the middle for the wetness. Below that, I've done some line variation tests. So the first three lines are with no pressure. The next three lines are with some pressure. And then I do some messes. And below that, that scribble. That's just so that I can test the ink flow because I don't really do fast writing at the best of times. So that's a nice way to try and simulate that. Overall, it's a nice pen. Why I've had to knock it down, it was that scratchiness. So for this reason, this pen comes in at position number six. So that's the Twisby Eco. At position number five, I've had to give that to the Twisby Draco. I've got nothing against this pen. It's just, it doesn't jump out as a writer to me. I love the looks of it. I love the color. I mean, let's just do a slow turnaround. You can really see that color coming out, can't you? If I take the cap off, this is the biggest letdown to me. It's this nib. It just looks ridiculously small when it's with the rest of the pen. It writes fine. Don't get me wrong, it writes really nicely. Just doesn't look the part. I do like the rose gold finish to it. Again, that matches in with the different colours in the body. The ink I was using in this, it was Dimine Syrah. Just move that up. Let's take a look over on the Tomoe River paper so we can get a better look at that ink. So Dimine Syrah, here it is. I'm in two minds about this pen. As I say, I've always had it inked up since I've had it, but I just think it's overpriced for what it is. Nothing wrong with the pen. It writes really nicely. I can see character when I'm writing. It's smooth. I don't have any issues with skipping or hard starts. It's a really nice pen. If we look down near the bottom, you can see as a combo, it's a lot wetter than the Twisby Eco with the Shinryoku. Still got some nice line variation coming through. Still keeps up really well with the flow. It's another piston filler, but because it's a solid color, we have this ink window. Again, to me, this is something which lets it down because I find this ink window, it's a little bit on the small side, isn't it? But Again, it's functional. I can still see what ink's in there. But there does seem to me, well, there's a lot of little things that are not exactly how I would like them. So I have to mark it down. So that comes in this month at position number 
5. So that's the Twisby Draco. Let's reposition the paper again, shall we? There we go. We've already got the top and the bottom knocked off, so we'll go straight for the middle. Position number four. This is starting to get tough now. I mean, I will be honest, I've really enjoyed all of these pens. There's not one of them which I'd say is a bad pen, but I've got to rank them. So what I'm going to do is for position number four is award it to this. This is the Twisby VAC 700R in the iris pattern. I love this iris pattern. You can see it here on the cap band, on the clip, and on the top. But more so, you can see it here on the nib. I think that looks ever so nice. This is a vacuum filler. One of the things I've found with this, and chances are it's down to the way I'm filling it, I can only ever really get about half a barrel full. And with the ink that I started off this month, the Dimine Stargazer, because it's in that small ink vent bottle, the nib wasn't able to go in very far. So I've got to be honest, before I'd even started the first week's writing, it had run out of ink, so it didn't take much. What I did is I changed the ink then. I put Pelican Edelstein Garnet. This is a really nice, colourful ink, isn't it? Let's go and take a look at this ink on the Tomoe River paper. So on here, you can see the colour. To me, it's going towards the brown side of red. Not sure if that's what I would call a garnet. In my mind, garnet's a bright red. It's still nice, though. It's an unusual colour. I've quite enjoyed using it. It's another wet one, as we can see down near the bottom. Line variation, again, is good. And then the scribble, the flow, that keeps it really nicely. It's a nice pen. I'm not going to say it isn't. Other months, it may have come out as number one, but I have to rank it going along with the other pens. So for this month, I find that this one comes in at position number four. So this is the VAC 700R. So position number three, that goes to the Opus 88 Coloro. This is a nice, simple looking pen. We've got the blue, which is in Ebonite. Then this teal color, this plastic, that just offsets that blue really nicely, doesn't it? This pen is an eyedropper fill. It takes an awful lot of ink. I usually find I'm getting about three months between fills. If I take off the cap, the nib, there we go. Nice plain nib, really good at writing though. It's really nice and smooth. It's enjoyable to write with. Started the month with Diamine Jack Frost. Let's go and take a look at that on my Tomo River paper. So here we can see I'm calling out when I first put this in, I had some issues and I get this with a lot of my pens, mainly on Rhodia paper. All I do is do a couple of passes on some micro mesh and that generally solves it. And then it writes gloriously on all papers. If you go and look down the bottom, wetness, yep, yeah, it's a moderate wetness again. A little bit of line variation and the flow keeps up. I'm going to switch now back to my live camera because I'm going to show you here, this is the actual Rhodia paper that we've just been looking at a photo of. Now, why I'm doing this is this ink does have a red sheen, which you can just about see. It's not very pronounced. And that, to me, is one of the things that lets this down. I'd have loved to have seen more of that sheen coming through. Let's just move that out of the way. So back with the photos. This one, this is the second ink I put in. This is Pure Pen's john frost i thought we'd go from jack frost to john frost and i believe they're actually both derived from the same name anyway i think they're both derived from john this is a nice colored ink it's a nice green ink it's got a lot of vibrancy to it it flows really well again absolutely no problems wetness it seems to be a little bit drier than the jack frost now although this says it's made by pure pens it's actually manufactured for them by diamine let's go and take a look at the live camera again once again here, I've got that Tomoe River paper with this ink. Because again, this one should have a red sheen. I don't know if this is going to capture on the camera. I do see more sheen coming through on here. But again, it's not as much as I was expecting. Hopefully that's been coming through there. I'm just trying to wiggle the paper about for you. So all in all, really nice pen fits nicely in my hand nice to use so this is the opus 88 coloro which comes in at position number three all this means we've got two pens left we've got the twisby diamond 580 and we've got the Le Ban 325. Position number two. This was really difficult to decide, but I've picked 
the Laban 325. This pen, it looks so nice. It's glorious. Cartridge converter pen. It's the only cartridge converter that we've got in this selection. It's currently empty because I've wrote this out about three times now. Started the month with J. Herban Terre de Fur. Got about two writing sessions out of that. Then it ran out. So I switched to Robert Oster Café Crema. Wow, I love the Café Crema in this pen. Let's go and look at paper. With the Terre de Fur, it's nice. It's a nice, solid brown colour. It's a slightly unusual brown to my eye. I think there's a lot of red coming through in it. And maybe that's where the, the fur part of the name comes from. Because I believe Terre de Fur stands for Land of Fire. I can see loads of shading when I write it comes out really nice. It flows really well. Down near the bottom, we can see very wet. Loads of line variation. And the flow keeps up so well. Once I changed it, though, to the Café Crema, I think I may have found my perfect ink for this pen. The colour, it complements each other really well. They look so nice together. The nib, it just glides over the paper. It's really nice and such a pleasure to write with. Now, I have used this pen on a number of papers, from my Rodia to the Tomai River, to some Midori, to some cheaper notepads, to some art paper. Every paper I've used, it's just performed so well. As we can see here, there's such a huge amount of shading coming through. Again, it's a moderately wet performer. A little tiny bit of line variation that I'm seeing, but the ink flow just keeps up and it writes so nice. It came in at number two because if we look at the price, it's $146. So you're paying double the price that I paid for the pen that came in at position number one. And I, yes, I know we're meant to be looking at the performance, but we also have to look at the price. And for this reason, this pen came in at position number two. So this, it's the Laban 325. Just going to reposition the paper a little bit. There's only one pen left, which means position number one went to the Twisby Diamond 580. This pen, it's so understated. And I've got to be honest, I can't believe that I've left it so long between uses. You know, I must have been well over six months, if not going on for a year since I last used this pen. And it's such a shame because it writes so well. It's very simple. It's very understated. Look at that. It's just transparent all the way through. If we look at the nib, you know, it's that standard nib, very similar in size to what we've got on the Eco and on the Draco. Downsides, one of the things I will say is this section, teeniest bit on the narrow side for me. Not enough to cause me pain when I'm writing, but enough that I know it's there, that I know it's a bit short. I love the ink in here. It's a really nice, deep, dark, rich brown ink. Let's look at it on the Tomai River paper. It's just a nice standard brown colour. It's nothing jumping out at you. There's nothing there to really grab you. It's just nice. It flows. It's consistent. I do see some shading, but not as much as I see when I'm using the Café Crema in the Laban, but it's enough that it fetches character to my writing. In terms of wetness, it's one of the drier combos that I've got this month. Line variation, again, like the other Twisbys, we've got some nice line variation there. The ink flow keeps up. This, to me, it's a workhorse pen. You fill it and you start writing and you just keep writing. I think that the body is slightly longer than the E-curl. Let me fetch this in. There we go. Let me just line up there the tops of these caps. So the body, to me, is a little bit longer, which means this mechanism isn't taken up as much as what I see with the Eco. Ink-wise, as you can see, I've still got about half the body full of ink. That's after a month of usage. Really lasts a long time. It's a nice, smooth writer. As I said earlier, it's a pen I don't use often enough. And that's why I'm glad of using this idea of themes because it made me fetch the pen back out and realise how much I enjoy using it. The pen, it's also 72 Australian dollars. As I said, when we looked at the Laban, half the price of that Laban, which is why this comes in at position number one. So this is the Twisby Diamond 580. So let me move this paper out of the way and I'll fetch all this month's pens back in for one final look. So this month's pens... Position number six, Twisby Eco. Number five, Twisby Draco. Number four, Twisby Vac 700R. Number three, Opus 88 Coloro. Number two, Laban 325. Position number one goes to the Twisby Diamond 580. 
I've really enjoyed looking at these pens this month. I like the idea of focusing on one country and coming from Taiwan, I think this was quite interesting. I need to see if I can find some other manufacturers that are from Taiwan because we're a little bit heavy here on Twisbys, but there was still enough that we got a good variation of pens and how they work. So this was my wrap up for March of 2022. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Are there any other brands from Taiwan that you know of that I could potentially try? I'm enjoying using these, but as I've already said, I'd like to expand so that I don't have to have four Twisbys if I do something similar again. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.